And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to talk about a game that plays uh, one player up to, I guess, as many as you want. It's Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Uh, now, there's not a lot of components to this game. You're not going to see a ton in the review, but I'm going to talk a little bit about what the game is. Uh, but essentially, this is a deduction game in which you're going to be using your mental, you know, power in order to try and figure out what happened in a crime faster or better than Sherlock Holmes. So real quick, I'll show you what you get inside the box and how the game plays, and then we'll come back here and we'll get my final opinions on Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. So here you can see all of the components for Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Now, it doesn't look like much, and it's really not a visual experience here. It's more of a mental experience. So what you can see is we have a map of London first. Uh, that's this paper map here. Uh, and on this map, you can see that there are all kinds of little numbered buildings, and there's districts outlined by red lines. For example, we have the Northwest and the West Central, Southwest, and so forth and so on. Now, each of these buildings has a little number on it. So we can see here that this is 82, uh, and it would be 82 Northwest, which could be referenced in a case as someone's address or the address of a, a business or something like that, maybe where a crime occurred. Uh, you'll need this map in order to just kind of reference where things are located in, in proximity to the other things. Now, in addition, you can see here we have a directory. Uh, now, this directory is going to have the names uh, and addresses of people in London. So if it does not give you the address, you can look it up in here. Uh, and there's going to be tons of them. You'll see that there's all these different little tiny names and addresses, all alphabetized. And then at the back, you have the businesses that are listed by type of business. So you can see uh, if we have public houses and we have stables. So if you need to go you know, research maybe a weapon, you can look up a gunsmith or something like that. So you have this, which is a invaluable resource. Uh, now, the, cases, or the game is going to be about solving cases, and there are 10 different cases, each one of which is illustrated in one of these books. Uh, and inside this book, you're going to open up, this is the first case, it's called The Munitions Magnate. Uh, it's case one, which occurred on the 12th of March, 1888. And if you open it up, it's going to have a narrative at the beginning about what happened and what the case is. Uh, and it's going to be basically as told to you by Sherlock Holmes. Now, Sherlock knows the result of the case. You are trying to figure out the case as posed to you by Sherlock by going around and researching all of the evidence, going to the scene of the crime, uh, you know, following up leads on, on people and maybe different items that you find there. So Sherlock's already solved it, and Sherlock always has a score of 100. And your goal is to find out how the case happened, what happened to the details of the cases, uh, better than Sherlock has himself. So you're going to be pouring through here, and maybe it will lead you to the scene of the crime. And at that scene, you're going to get several different names. You're going to get affidavits about what happened. You're going to have pieces of evidence. And you can choose any one of those things to follow up on. You know, maybe you find a weapon with a unique marking, and you decide, okay, I'd like to find out where that weapon comes from. And you can look up in here, you know, let's go find the store that it was purchased at, maybe, or something like that. And you can go there, and there'll be a whole paragraph about what uh, you find at that store. Maybe you interview an employee, and it gives you some details about the specific weapon purchased, or anything like that. Now, these are all cases that I'm just making up. This hasn't come up in any of the cases that I've done so far. But you can do that, or you can follow a lead to a person's home that maybe was a witness, and you can talk to them about the case, and they will give you more details. Uh, all of it's very free form. There are no specific choices that you're given in the game. Uh, it doesn't say you can go here, here, or here. It's not a choose your own direction in that, that way. It's a, a very free form experience where you go, okay, we've talked to this person, this person, and this person. Who would we like to go talk to next, or what would we like to go see next in order to get more details about the case? In addition to all of the information you'll get from following the different leads, which are all presented in these case books, you're going to have a newspaper for the day. You'll see that the case took place on the 12th of March, 1888, and this is the newspaper from London, Monday, March 12th, 1888. In this newspaper are several, you know, inane stories. Some of them won't matter. There's all kinds of information about things that are being traded, things that were lost, things that happened. Whatever the case is, it's your typical newspaper. But in some of these details that may not seem important, there are sometimes very important pieces of information that may pertain to the case, but may not be immediately obvious that they pertain to the case. So you'll want to pour through this kind of heavily to find out if you can find anything good. In addition to the newspaper for the case, you'll actually have the newspapers for all of the previous cases as well. So you may be able to go back and find out information from previous days that's useful for your own case. So basically the idea here is that you're going to follow leads, trying to find out as much about the case as possible in order to solve who committed the crime, 
why, and so forth and so on. Uh, and at the end of the case, there's going to be two sets of questions. One immediately pertaining to the case, you know, why was it done, who did it, yada, yada, yada. And then one with more superficial details about aspects of the case that's going to be bonus points. If you answer all of the, the questions directly related to the case, right, you're going to get 100 points. Uh, but you're going to lose five points for each lead you took that is more leads than Sherlock himself took to solve the case. So it comes up with a predefined number of how many leads he needed uh, in order to follow and to get the case correct. And if you use more than him, you're going to lose five points for each one more that he uses. If you use less, you're going to gain five points. So you can get over 100 points right there. In addition, the second set of questions, the more superficial ones, are going to provide you with bonus points. So if you get those right, you'll get even more points. Now, typically this game can be played as either a cooperative where everyone's working together to try and solve the details of the case, or there's a competitive mode where everybody's you know, trying to figure out the details on their own to answer the questions separately, uh, and then go through and see who best scored on all of the questions and the details of the case. Either way, once you're done, you'll compare your score to Sherlock's, and if you did better, then you can feel good about yourself, and more likely, if you did not do better than Sherlock, you can hope to do better in the next case. Well, there you have it. That is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Uh, as you can see, not a lot in the box. It's mostly just a lot of reading and then trying to use the materials you have in order to deduce what has happened. Uh, now, the real trick, or the real, I think, uh, highlight of this game and the trick of the game is to pay very much or pay a lot of attention to what's going on and to bounce ideas off of another person. I don't know if I would enjoy it so much as a solo game, but I think it's really good as a two-player game uh, because you can bounce ideas off of another person, try and decide where the best place to go in terms of a lead is, uh, try and remember all of the material, and uh, you're definitely going to want a piece of paper and a pencil in order to write stuff down, uh, but it's so freeform and it's so open that you have all of these choices as to what leads to take, uh, and there's a real mental challenge in trying to figure out which ones are the best ones in order to quickly and efficiently solve the case with all of the details. So if that sounds good to you, I would definitely suggest people checking out this new printing of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, uh, recently republished by Yasari Games, uh, and I think a real gem for anybody who enjoys a good uh, narrative experience that also involves a mystery. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. What?